today I'm really excited to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, ever since I got this car. Kind of a pet peeve I have, and a lot of people in the car community have it, but it's badging things that aren't real. Like, oh yeah, like throwing a Type R emblem on an LS Integra. It's like not cool. I'm not a big fan of like STI wings on a WRX or M badges on a BMW. One of the culprits that gets done a lot is uh, painting the valve cover on a Honda Red to match kind of like the Type R engines, the B18, B, B18C1. So pretty much ever since I bought this car, it was painted red by the previous owner. And that was one of the things I'm like, Ugh, I gotta change that. But over time, I just haven't done more maintenance type things. So I'm excited today. Uh, never really done it before, but I did kind of look up online and I'm really excited to use this stuff really, just cause the concept of the aircraft, let's see what it's called. So aircraft remover, super, uh, intense paint thinner stuff. If you can see videos online of planes, they spray them down to do the paint jobs and then with this stuff, let it soak and then they rinse it all clean. So I'm kind of excited to use it, see how well it works. I should be able to just kind of apply it, let it soak for a little bit and spray it off and see. One of the main things on a Honda is the valve cover gaskets leaking. So this is kind of a good maintenance type deal to show the removal of one. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna get on today. Little walk through the valve cover. It's this big red guy here. It's held on. Mine's kind of a uh, getter right now. I don't have the actual clip for that one. It's held on to these little uh, bolts all the way around. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The yeah, ground is on there as well. It doesn't really hold it down, but you'll have to remove it. Yeah, I think that's it, because these are actually, you don't need to remove these to get the valve cover off. This, uh, these bolts here, which mine's broken. Lessons learned about uh, trusting kind of cheap torque wrenches. So we'll get to that. Of uh, That's like about the only scary thing on this job is the potential to uh, snap the bolts when you're putting it back on. With the, uh, the aircraft removal, we're gonna spray this. This is gonna remove the base coat, probably. We've got these scrubbers to scrub it down and try and get it as bare as possible. And then I've got this uh, kind of 500 degree engine enamel. The general form consensus was that it'll work fine. Uh, we've got a primer, we're gonna do a primer coat. We're gonna do the base coat after that, um, which is, I was gonna do just the gloss black, kind of keep it classy, but uh, I saw this color, this kind of like graphite gray. I don't know if it says what color it exactly is, but something like that. And I was like, oh, that might look cool, like a darker gray with the like light silver of the Integra. So it won't be exactly an OEM look, but it'll be kind of a real clean look, a nice clear coat to give it that shine. And these are all, like you say, the 500 uh, degree. Fahrenheit versions. Okay, so a couple steps for these. You're gonna need to remove these ignition wires. Uh, mine have little numbers on them, but if you're running with the stock ones or different things that don't have the little numbers, I mean, it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. They're as long as they reach, basically, so you can figure them out. But there's been cases where they kind of can get mixed and match, so. You, want to, you may want to mark them to know. I believe these are eight millimeters. Let me see, I've got my little, so yeah, I think I've got my eight millimeter, 10 millimeter. Grab the ratchet. Do a little mini extender. So this is the eight. Nope, eight's way too small. Yep, everything's pretty much 10 millimeter, I'm pretty sure. Yep, even the, uh, even the ground, so. Roll with a 10 millimeter. Uh, you can go ahead and take your oil cap off. Here's your PCV valve. Yeah, just kinda wig wiggle that guy out of there. Uh, this is different if you happen to have a VTEC um, motor. The layout's a little bit different. Uh, 
to get them off. I've never actually taken the cover off of a VTEC motor before. A pair of little pliers to loosen up your uh, purge here. Oh man, mine's so worn out. I probably should get another one. I'll fight that battle when I get to it. I kind of take the approach of doing these in the star pattern. It's actually similar to how you'd tune a drum kit uh, before you tight. Jeez, that was pretty tight for my liking. I don't know if I really like how tight that one was. Oh, that one either. So scary because these bolts will break. With anything with these bolts, you definitely want to put them somewhere, like a bowl or uh, just somewhere that they can be contained and not get lost. And uh, every one of these bolts have these little like kind of uh, rubber grommets. It's kind of like rubber grommets around them. The bowl actually comes off the middle of it like that. So those uh, usually kind of fall everywhere, so when you're popping it off, try and keep track of them. And try and take it off as gently as you can. Okay, so now we've got all our bolts off. Uh, the, the key to this really is to not manhandle it too much. A rubber mallet is kind of what I use to kind of pop her loose. Let's see if that, yep, there we go. Came off pretty easy. Got my little uh, problem spot over there. slide this down some more. I have gotten frustrated with these hoses before and just cut them like, I don't know if there's something weird where, where everything is positioned on my car, but it doesn't line up as well as it should with this uh, wiring pressure release. Oh no, what did I say? Actually, yeah, that's a step I missed. You can take these little rubble, rubber grommets off once they're loosened keep those in a safe spot. Luckily, my intake manifold saved the day. Oh, oh goodness. Let's see if we can look at that guy down there. There we go. Oh, man, it looks so nice. It's such a shame that it's leaking. That actually looks like an OEM. Valve cover gasket. So yeah, as you can see, it's looking fresh and so clean. I haven't seen it since it was rebuilt. Yeah, it doesn't look like they uh, used any kind of sealer. It's just the gasket, which is what I prefer. So yeah, that's a, that's a win. Makes life a little bit easier. What it looks like inside, let me see it if you do it yourself. This is actually looking very clean right now. Such a shame that I'm having a little bit of smoking problems. And I'm assuming it's the valve guides. Like, judging by how clean this looks, I, I have a hard time believing that the new seals they put in got damaged. Maybe they did. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't want to go through the hassle of doing the valve seals. It's not like a crazy hard job, but it is a job that I'd be like, all right, I did it, and then it still smokes versus just taking the whole head off and setting a date and going to a machine shop and having them press in new valve guides and give it a full rehaul, which is probably what I want to do anyway because now the bottom end is good to go, knowing that the head will be 
machined as well. But I kind of didn't want to go that route just because it's almost like, should I go ahead and do VTEC stuff to put a new head on it if I'm going to go through all that trouble? But I really did want to do a B18, B1, turbo, built bottom end, no VTEC. Uh, just kind of that was the build goal. So we'll see how it goes. Situations change your mind sometimes. So here's the valve cover, pulled out, laid out. I'm going to get it uh, cleaned up, clean off the oil, get the, the top side cleaned off and scrubbed down, use the aircraft remover and see what happens. I've never done this before, but I'm pretty excited. This kind of stuff's fun. You can see some kind of rough spots, but it's hard to know if they were kind of already there or not beforehand. Oh, actually, that's just dirt right now. You got some dirt on there. It's been sitting out here for a little bit. Yeah, and that was the, the fun part to take off the, the taped up sections. See how it looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's see, like some kind of sanding there the clear coat kind of has a little bit of rough edges so it's not my my best work but it also looks a million times better than it did on the uh when i first got it next step is going to be getting all of your uh, gaskets and things back together for uh all the holes make sure everything's cleaned out smooth if there's any kind of gunk left over you want to get all that out of there as best as you can because you want this to create a nice seal with the head on the engine when you put it back on so now that we've got our valve cover and gaskets all in on the four holes so we're ready to put everything back on before you do that just like with the gaskets you want to clean everything off you want to clean and make sure this surface all around where they're going to be in contact is as smooth as it can be. See, I've got oil on those circles. I need to clean those up. You want these to be as smooth as possible and clean as possible so that the gaskets can make a nice seal so there won't be any leaks. So if it's a Honda, there's always leaks with valve covers. But hopefully today, 
there won't be. Tightening these nuts down on the valve cover, there's a couple different schools of thought. One is if you have a really nice torque wrench that can do low measurements, I think it's 7.3 foot pounds, something like that, uh, which is roughly about hand tight, is what everybody says on the internet. And I've had that experience too, because the one time I've broken some of these bolts was trying to do a specific torque wrench. That's not to say that's not the right way to do it. Mine just were kind of brittle, old nuts and bolts, so it's it's pick your poison kind of thing. Uh, I do feel more confident in not breaking it, doing it hand tight versus trusting the torque wrench. So it's your call. If they do break though, you're kind of out of luck because it's in the aluminum head and it makes it a big pain. You can sometimes drill it out or do what you need to do, but for the most part, it's easier to just take it to a machine shop, which I'm planning on doing. So if I mess this up, it's not the worst thing in the world. This is uh, roughly done, got all my bolts tightened up. Uh, now all I need to do is plug the ignition wires back in and put your oil cap back on, don't forget that step. Also your uh, PCV valve, that goes back in, like so. Last step is to crank it up, see if you have any leaks, let it run for a little bit, maybe pull out the ignition wires after you've let it run. And uh, because if you did have a, a leak, if one of those wasn't sealed tight enough, you would have more than likely oil dripping down into the spark plug well. If something like that happens, it's not the end of the world. You can fix it. It's, uh, you don't want to run the car like that if you can avoid it or anything. But you can get that old oil out of there. Multiple techniques, you can look up on the internet and kind of find some. But for the most part, you just probably need to do this process again with a new valve cover and maybe, maybe check that your bolts are actually tight or they're not stripped somewhere, something like that, something simple. That's where I'm gonna end the video. Hopefully this helps you guys out some. Uh, message me with any questions. I'm sure somebody smarter than me out there is gonna see this and tell me something I did terribly wrong. That's fine. This is a first time for me, uh, but share your knowledge in the comments and uh, help anybody out with a step I may have done wrong or something that might've been easier. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.